Hello, poetry lovers and poetry curious. So, I am returning to 50 Modern American and British Poets, 1920 to 1970, by Lewis Untermeyer. And I'm going to read you two poems. So what I do with this book is I'm reading you poems in sets that are tied together by a theme of some kind. Um, and then we'll just look at how they're similar and how they're different. Our theme for today is a dark mood. And the poems I'm going to read are In a Dark Time by Theodore Rothke and Awake by Jim Harrison. And then maybe I will end up reading something from what, and I haven't even looked at this, I'm not preparing properly. In the back of this um the editor of this volume, being Louis Untermeyer, has uh, quite generous bios and statements about the different poems. And I haven't looked at that prior to this, but maybe I will do that at the end of this, and we'll see what he has to add in terms of commentary. Now let me see if I can find my poems since I was not good at preparing here. Um, let me see. In some ways I have prepared, but <laughs> by putting numbers on things. I found Jim Harrison's poem, but I think I want to read the one by Theodore Rothke first. All right, forget the little number tabs that I created. Oh, no, here it is. I was going to say, there's always the table of contents, Jennifer. But there we go. So the first one I'm going to read is In a Dark Time by Theodore Rothke. In a dark time, the eye begins to see. I meet my shadow in the deepening shade. I hear my echo in the echoing wood a lord of nature weeping to a tree. I live between the heron and the wren, beasts of the hill and serpents of the den. What's madness but, no, but nobility of soul at odds with circumstance? The day's on fire. I know the purity of pure despair, my shadow pinned against a sweating wall. That place among the rocks, is it a cave or winding path? The edge is what I have. A steady storm of correspondences, a night flowing with birds, a ragged moon, and in broad day the midnight come again. A man goes far to find out what he is. Death of the self in a long, tearless night, all natural shapes blazing unnatural light, dark, Dark my light, and darker my desire. My soul, like some heat-maddened summer fly, keeps buzzing at the sill. Which I is I? A fallen man, I climb out of my fear. The mind enters itself, and God the mind. And one is one, freeing in the tearing wind. Excuse me, free in the tearing wind. And in that last line, we have, and one, with the first letter not capitalized, is one with the first letter capitalized. So we're kind of referring back to God or some kind of divine sort of uh, unity that becomes one. So I'm going to read the last two lines together. The mind enters itself, and God the mind, and one is one, free in the tearing wind. Yeah, so I find that 
quite a powerful poem, which to me is kind of a dark night of the soul kind of a poem. But then we have a poem that whose title, so the title of Theodore Rothke's poem is In a Dark Time, and so you're expecting what comes after. Whereas Jim Harrison's poem is Awake, and so to me it caught me off guard. Limp with night fears, hellbore, wolfbane, Marlowe is daggered, fire, volts, African vipers, the grizzly, the horses, the horses sensed, the rattlesnake by the mailbox, how he struck at thrown rocks, black water, framed by police, wanton wife, I'm a, I'm a bad poet, broke and broken at 32, a renter, smoke, shot by mistake, airplanes and trains, half-mast hard-ons, a poisoned earth, sun will go out, car break down in a blizzard, my animals die, fist fights, alcohol, caskets, the hammerhead gliding under the boat near Loggerhead Key, my soul, my heart, my brain, my life so interminably st struck with an axe as wet wood splits bluntly, mauled into sections for burning. <laughs> oh, my Lord, it's a magnificent list of things that keep you awake at night with your head in your hands. And it builds, um, it kind of builds energy and momentum as it goes on. So what to say? Um, In a Dark Time by Theodore Rothke is somewhat more abstract. We actually don't know what has put him in this moment of self-questioning. You know, there's something about darker my, darker my desire and, you know, wrestling with himself over something, but we don't know what. So it's more abstract and sort of existential questioning of the self. Who am I? In Awake, it's more the outside world that is fearful or potentially attacking or causing anxiety. Um, it does eventually get down to my soul, my heart, my brain, my life so interminably struck with an axe. There's another place, too. I'm a bad poet, broke, but that's something you would feel shame that I would think, in other words, it's a bad impression that you put on. You haven't achieved in the world the way you would have wanted to achieve. But it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily make you a bad person, like that you're battling some internal darker desire. Um, although it does mention alcohol here somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Um, But there's a sense in this awake more of anxiety about one's place in the world and about, you know, losing your way in the world, whereas Theodore Rothke's to me is more abstract and seems more about losing your losing your way with yourself and your maybe your values or something because it does in the end go back to God and and there is that resolution there a fallen man I climb out of my fear the mind enters itself and God the mind and one is one free in the tearing wind we don't get that resolution with Awake by Jim Harrison we're left with being mauled into sections for burning there is no there is no resolution 
So I don't know that I'm going to, to dwell on their similarities and differences. I could talk the one, let me see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. So Awake is, and I'll try if I can find these poems. I can probably find In a Dark Time by Theodore Rothke. I'm not sure that I can find Awake by Jim Harrison. But if I can, I'll put them down in, links to them down in the description box. But Awake is one stanza, a relatively short poem, and what is this, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, still just 24 lines in a dark time, but it's uh, four six-line stanzas. So it's still not that much longer than the other one. It's just broken up into stanzas. In a dark time has um, rhyme and Oh, I was going to say, is it in a dark time the eye begins to see? Um, I meet my shadow in the deepening shade. I don't know that it's strictly iambic. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do we have iambic pentameter here? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We might have roughly, roughly iambic pentameter in in a dark time. Um. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. It looks like the lines in awake are, except for the last one, which is one, two, three, four, five. I'm just counting syllables. This is what you do when you're into pet poetry. You count syllables. Um, six, seven, eight, nine. So I wouldn't. One, two, one, two three, four. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, it's not iambic, um, but it may be somewhat syllabic. This um, awake, but not strictly so. You know, in other words, each line is roughly the same number of syllables. Interesting. Their line lengths are very similar. All right, but I'm, I'm not going to continue to compare them. They're just, it's like how, how, what I'm looking at with these comparisons is more just how each poet is treating a certain theme. Uh, and in this case, it was uh, Dark Mood. So I'm going to come to the back here and see if I can't find out what what is said about these whoops there he was these two gentlemen so what the editor of this volume has to say about these two gentlemen Theodore Rothke was born in 1908 in Saginaw Michigan where his family owned 25 flower growing acres of which a quarter million feet were under glass. In other words, greenhouses. Um, he remembered the greenhouses as a jungle and a paradise. Educated at the University of Michigan and Harvard University, he taught at Lafayette College, Pennsylvania State University, where he was the varsity tennis coach oh, at both universities. He also taught at Bennington College and the University of Washington. His career as a poet was spectacularly successful. He received every award a poet can hope to win, including two Guggenheim Fellowships, the Pulitzer Prize, the Bollinger Prize, and the National Book Award. Um, let me see. Differing from his course as a poet, Rothke's personal life was anything but prosperous. A multifaceted manic depressive, 
His delicately calibrated and precariously balanced mind made Rothke a victim of constant tensions. He was hospitalized intermittently. He was given shock treatments. I didn't know this about him. <laughs> he was nursed painstakingly. Uh, he never stopped writing. He said he did some of his best work when he felt the oncoming panic or manic phase. He quoted Emily Dickinson's line, Much Madness is Divine Ascents, and imitated that, like Hart Crane and others, intimated and intimated that, like Hart Crane and others, he achieved the highest degree of creativity from induced derangement of the senses. Okay, he liked to align himself with such wildly ecstatic poets as Baudelaire and Blake. He died in his 56th year, apparently of a heart attack in a neighbor in a neighbor's swimming pool. Poetry was Rothke's only therapy. His method was to well, can't say that. Sounds like he had elect. Didn't they say he had electric treatments, or shock treatments? Yeah. His method was uh, quote to think part way through and feel the rest of the way unquote. His imagination was intense. His jangling passions found <laughs> a bit jangling passions. His jangling passions found expression in some of the roughest rhapsodies and some of the most restrained love poems of the period. I don't know that his love poems were all restrained, but anyway. A few years before his death he wrote, quote, I have tried to transmute and purify my life. The sense of being defiled by it in both small and formal and sometimes blunt short poems and latterly in longer poems, which tried to catch the very movement of the mind itself to trace the spiritual history of the protagonist, not I personally, of, of all haunted and harried men. So that is what he has tried to do. <laughs> all right. So of In a Dark Time... Um, Louis Untermeyer says that it is one of Rothke's later poems which he labeled, quote, sequence sometimes metaphysical, unquote. In most of his poetry, Rothke had abandoned rhyme, yet in the later darker poems, rhyme accentuated the meaning as well as the music. In a searching soliloquy, the poet relates to all things in nature, beasts of the hill and serpents of the den, which we read, okay, and finds out what he is. A fallen, fear-ridden man, he climbs out of his fear. Okay, so that was Theodore Rothke. So what does he have to say, Dylan, or not, um, Louis Untermeyer, about... Jim Harrison. Oh, come on. Where are you? Where are you? There he is. Here's Jim Harrison. Was born in 1939 in northern Michigan. Oh, so they were both Michigan poems uh, or poets. I was missing that. Uh, okay. Jim Harrison was born in 1939 in northern Michigan, where, like the poet Theodore Rothke, um, he learned to share the world of plant and animal life. A National Endowment of the Arts Fellowship and a Guggenheim Fellowship aided him to complete three volumes of poetry, Plain Song, Locations, and Outlier. These were followed by a novel, Wolf, described by Jonathan Yardley as a raunchy, funny, swaggering, angry cocksure, but also a handsome, handsomely written self-exploration. I, I think Jim Harrison is still alive today. This was published in 1973. Okay, as a poet, Harrison is plain-spoken and precise, with an innate empathy for everything that is alive and vulnerable. He presents paradox, a solitary man who makes immediate and, and understanding contact with the commonest and most insignificant object encountered, a factual man who luxur luxuriates in fantasies. 
I don't, I don't know that I see that in his work that much. I haven't, well, I have read his work. But anyway, um, and I think he went on to work in film, like writing screenplays or something. Um, so Lewis Untermeyer says of the poem Awake, which I just read to you, um, that it opens with the poet, a prey to insomnia, remembering how other poets, particularly Christopher Marlowe, died. All right, so I don't know that any other poets, that are the death of any other poets are stated in there. But anyway, he did say, Christopher Marlowe, got stabbed or something. Unable to sleep, he belabors himself and tortures his mind with exaggerated fears, uh, the recalls of actual accidents and sexual anxieties. Suddenly, the poem leaps to its end with a most surprising and vivid meta metaphor. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it is, it is uh, I think, a strong mauled into sections for burning. I think it's a strong metaphor. But he seemed to be heading in something like that. To something that wouldn't be good. Okay. That's those two poets and those two poems. Hope you found it interesting. Take care and I'll see you again soon.